Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to actually start by walking us through an entire end-to-end -end calendar build-out experience. Now I've done some other videos in the past where I have kind of segmented out and done individual topics around a calendar table, but I've had quite a few requests from a lot of you on asking me how to actually build out from scratch like every column for a basic calendar table. So I'm going to go through that, all the steps involved, some of the best practices, and everything in between to build out at least a starter kit for your basic calendar table. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start, I'm going to show the final product. As you can see over here, we have both a calendar table with a series of columns that are in a folder, as well as a hierarchy folder that has a date hierarchy in here. Now I've done another video before on topics of dependent versus independent date hierarchy. I personally like to use an independent date hierarchy. And by independent, I mean the fact that this, if I'm using the go to next level, each of these levels is fully independent of the previous one. So the year is operational by itself. If I go down to quarter year, it has both quarter and year. So I don't need to show both levels. If I go to month and year, same thing and down the list. Now, this is the type of hierarchy that I'm going to build out. If you're curious more about the logic behind this versus a dependent hierarchy, I have another video that I'll link you to over in the description down below over on the right. But for this video, the focus is going to be just on the end to end solution. So we're going to build out all the columns necessary in the calendar table, how to configure it and everything in between to get this established and to get at least the starter kit of a calendar table for you. So let's flip over to the starter file and go from there. All right, first things first. So for a starter file, and as a lot of you have done, is you often just, when you're starting out in Power BI, you import just a single sales or some type of informational or transactional table into here. And most of you will probably have seen this symbol before where you'll see that there's a date column that has an automatic included hierarchy. Now, there's a lot of conversations to go around this, but I'll just say in general, it's a good starter way to get the columns for year, quarter, month, and day. However, you cannot customize this at all. It's auto-generated, and it also creates one of these for every single date column that you have, so it can also cause some file bloat. So the first thing that we're gonna do before building out our own custom calendar table is I'm gonna disable this. And I will do that by coming up to File, Options and Settings, Go into options and there are two locations to do this globally you can turn off auto date time down here which will mean any new file will have this disabled by default also a recommendation that i would suggest now you can also come down to data load and turn that off for this file so that means any current files now have that turned off now i will disable this i will select ok the visual in front of us here we go is going to get rid of that hierarchy now we just have order date the symbol is no longer there and that automatically generated table no longer exists in the model because we're going to build out our own. So to start the journey, we're going to come up to modeling. I'm going to use new table to insert a table. Now before I build this out, you might have noticed that I'm using a DAX table to create this. I actually have a great video that talks about Power Query versus DAX and which to use for both for building out a calendar table. So again, another video that I'll reference. So go ahead and check that down below in the description if you want to learn more about the differences between building it in Power Query or in DAX. Zoom in a little bit and call this calendar. And we will use a function called the calendar function in DAX to create this. Now to start with, I want to show you what I would consider to be less of a good practice, more of a bad practice, and then I'll show you the proper way to do this. So a lot of people will write it out like this. They will have the min and the max order date or any date that you have from your fact table. The problem though is, in general, if you have a calendar table, it's usually recommended that you start at the beginning of the year from your earliest year and the end of the year of your latest year. It's just better for the date logic and any kind of other logic that you might have for measures that do running totals or year to date, quarter to date periods, things like that. So you want complete calendar years typically for any of the years that you would have on your calendar table. But let me show you the proper way to write that. Clear all this out. So we're gonna use a function called date. And now I can specify the year, the month, and the day. So the year I will actually fetch from the earliest. So we'll use the year function. We're gonna do that against the minimum order date. There we are. So now we're going to grab the earliest year from our fact table. And then because we want this to start at the beginning of the year, we just specify one and one. There we are. So now that's January 1st from the earliest year. And similarly, we can actually just copy this out. I'm going to reuse this here. And I'm going to change them into the max to grab the max year and change my one one to 12 and 31. So now this is December 31st. So we can even parse this out just a little bit to clean up the formatting. Go ahead and alt tab and then same thing here. And close the calendar table there. So now it's a little bit more readable. Min and max of the 1st of January from the earliest year. 
December 31st from the latest and good to go. The initial calendar table has been made over here. We can observe that in this date field that we have here. It is going from 2013 all the way through the end of 2015. So that's the entire calendar range that we need. Let's also come up and make sure that we have this formatted to a clean date. We don't need date time because we have no time elements. So we just want to format it as date. And now from here, we can start building out the columns that we need. So we're going to come over to calendar and I'll start adding these one at a time. I'm going to right click, select new column. We're going to add the year column. And that again will be the year function. And this time it gets my calendar column. There we are. Now, important to note with this, you want to make sure that any resummarizations, you don't have some turned on because we don't want to sum, even though this is a numerical column, you want to select don't summarize. There we are. So we have year. We're going to come over here again. I'm going to go to new column. This will be month number. So I call that usually month num using the month function off of my calendar date. Don't summarize. And now this will be used to sort my month column as well. So I'm going to come back to calendar, select new column. This will be just month, which will be the actual name that I'll use. And I'm going to use the format function off my calendar date. And then the format itself will be MMM, which is a short month. I like that because it displays nice and cleanly. And then we got to make sure that this is also sorted by the month number so it's not sorted alphabetically. And again, I like to build out an independent hierarchy table as I showed at the beginning. So I'm actually going to add a column for month and year as well. That way I can have month and year complete as a full date syntax on a single column. So I'm going to use month year as the name, and I'm going to use the function start of month against my calendar date. There we are. And then let's go ahead and change the format to month and year down here. There we are. And this will be part of my hierarchy. I'm going to have year the quarter column that has not been added yet for quarter year, month and year, and then date. So let's continue to build this out. Now I'm going to add quarter. So this will be quarter num, and that equals and using the quarter function against my calendar date column. There we are, making sure that is not summarized, adding my quarter formatted, which will just be called quarter. And I will combine Q with quarter num to have that as kind of a display. There we go. And if you want to, you can make sure to enforce that sorting by sorting that by quarter num. There we go. And now let's go ahead and add quarter year, new column, quarter year. There we are. And now this is actually going to be my quarter column here, the formatted one, using the ampersand to combine with the space and then my year column. There we are. Now this will not display correctly by default because the way that this is brought in it's actually going to do Q1s, then Q2. So this is not sorting in the order that I would like it to. So we actually need to create a hidden sort column for quarter year num, essentially. So again, we're going to do a combined column. We're going to select new column, call this quarter year num, and then this will be the calendar year column combined with the quarter column for number. So this will be, as you'll see as we display this out, click enter. There we go. So now this is a numerical column that we can choose to set as a data type of number. There we are. Now this can be sorted by quarter year num. We're going to go ahead and hide this because we'll never actually use this in a visual. It's just simply there to sort our quarter year column. And now if this is used in any visual, this will sort properly by the chronological order of the appropriate quarter years between all of those periods. And now we have all of the levels of the hierarchy that we need. We have our year quarter year, month and year, and date. And to create the hierarchy, we come over to the relationships tab or the model tab, and we will come over to year, right click, create a hierarchy. I'm gonna call this date hierarchy. There we are. And now with this open, after we've right clicked and created it just off the year, we can drag and drop the rest. So quarter year goes into here, and then month and year. And finally, date, there we are. So we have our date hierarchy in here, Another thing we need to do is set our calendar table as a calendar table type. So we're going to mark it as a date table. Select that. Make sure that we select the right column of date. And this will enforce that this stays unique in the relationships. We'll select OK. Come over to all tables. And now we've seen the symbol that is enforcing that this will remain a unique column. And this is the identifier row column. And we are now going to connect this back to our order date. There we are. And last but not least, we can also organize these a bit. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to put this into a folder called hierarchies. In case you have one or more, we also can now select the rest of these columns. Put this into columns. 
There we are. So now we have a bit of organization from a folder perspective. Coming back to the main page. Now taking this, we can get rid of order date. We can put in the date hierarchy on the X axis. And now you can see that we have the year. If I just navigate down one at a time to the next level, there is the quarter year from Q1234 for 2013 and so on. And then another beautiful thing about that independent date hierarchy is you can see that we have a continuous axis. If my month and year was a text data type instead of this, you'll notice something more like a categorical axis, which as you can see does not fit as well. So the fact that I'm using an independent date hierarchy with the month and year that is set as a date data type allows me to have this nice clean axis that actually works very well and allows me to compact the data a lot more. So one additional thing that I like about the independent date hierarchy versus the more traditional year, order, month, and day date hierarchy. But overall, I'm hoping this gave you a great starting point to kind of how to create a calendar table, set it up, a few practices to determine the ranges, and a starting point for some of the columns and hierarchies. And I do know that with calendar tables, there is a ton of different columns that you can add, including fiscal and many other things to fit business requirements, things like weekdays, etc. Way too many to get into just in a starter video, but I want to recommend that you check out our playlist that we have with a lot of other cool calendar uh, videos and talking about many different things related to time intelligence. And if you're interested as well, I have a very robust and templatizable calendar table available in our file store as well that you can go and check out on our company page. But otherwise, again, thank you for watching. If you liked this, check out some of the recommended videos we have up here. And of course, as always, it's very helpful if you like, comment, or share these videos if you found it interesting. And otherwise, I will see you all in our next video.